Here we are with the Peugeot e-Partner. Doesn't hide that fact with all this nice signage that we've got on it. Um, it is based on that Stellantis EMP2 platform and you, you'll see the same um, chassis, or sorry, it's the same powertrain underneath on the Citroen, on the Opel, Vauxhall, and the Toyota Pro A City, and the Fiat e -Doblo. So they're all based on that same platform. This comes in two body lengths. This is the standard length, and then there is a long length, and then also comes in two trims. Uh, it prices in Ireland starting at 36,660. Um, visually on the front, you've got that nice short bonnet. We'll actually open that up just so you can see that there is. You can see there's caverns of space in there, so you probably could put another storage area in the front if you wanted for cables, like a, an aftermarket tray. And uh, you've got that new, uh, the old Peugeot badge now that will be changing, and that grill, nice style, uh, like all of these. EMP2 platforms. It has a LED running daylight, but it has halogen bulbs and indicators on it. Uh, the upper level trim has the fog lights. This has the black bumpers. But oh, styling, styling wise, I think it looks well, like your typical Peugeot or Peugeot fair. Uh, you've got automatic lights and wipers on this model. Um, you have your small as I always say every time, Stellantis rear view mirror, you have your little dinky indicator. These are on 16 inch wheels, I think that's the only version that the um, electric comes in. I think the diesel or petrol comes in 15s and 16s. These are 215 65 16s. Got your scuff plate along the side there. Because this is the standard length, it has a single sliding body. I'll put the dimensions up on the screen, the height, and then the width. And it's got that steel bulkhead with the flexi seat storage that they talk about. But I'll look at that now in a second. Um, so this is panelled out. You've got six tie-up points. You've got one light up the back there. And they've got the charging flap here. And this won't open, this won't allow the door to open if there's a locking mechanism here. So you need to close it, close this, and then it'll open. And so it's 11 kilowatt on A, sorry, uh, 7.4 kilowatt on AC, and then 11 kilowatt optional, and then DC up to 100 kilowatt. So it's going to take um, about seven and a half hours on this. The battery is a 50 kilowatt hour battery. Seven and a half hours uh, to charge it up. And then on DC, it'll go from zero to 80% in 30 minutes. WLTP, as you can see on the side there, is about 275. Real world, you're probably looking at the near the 230. The payload height, yes, on the back, you've only got the electric E is the only real and no uh, exhaust pipe underneath. But then the Peugeot, or Peugeot, your high level brake light, is a 6040 door. And you have the ability of opening it wider, but it doesn't lock there. Same on the other side then as well. It'll open up to 180. Load height, I'll put up on the screen, and the load width. Um, cargo payload, it can take 800 kgs, and towing, you can put a tow bar on the back of it, and it'll also take 750 kgs. Cubic volume in the back is 3.8 meters cubed for the standard length, which is this one that's including that flexi seat, and then 4.4 meters if you go for the long length. Sorry, multi flex seat is what they're calling it. Um, so, yeah, plenty of room in the back here. It hasn't, it's no, no difference, no change to the actual uh, regular Peugeot partner. Uh, the batteries are in underneath. So, with this multi flex seat, you have the option of Popping this down, if we're looking for somewhere storage, you can actually store it over on the other side. And then in front you have a couple of different options. So it will pull this blue handle up here, it will fall flat and so that will then allow you to pull it all the way through. And there's actually a cover there that will, if you've got pipes or wood or whatever, maybe it'll actually it'll cover it up and, and secure it down. That's the first thing that it does. Then you also have this aluminous handle down here, and that will allow it, you can store 
and then it also has another blue handle over here and can I do this with one hand probably not and then that will allow the center seat to get into that office somewhere to eat kind of tray so it's not caught behind it for that middle passenger now that middle passenger is going to have a bit of difficulty with that um central where the gear lob would normally go um single electric window on the passenger side a good big driver or good big pocket down here glove box like all of the Stellantis ones just pop it up it's actually not bad and it goes back a fair distance as well it goes all the way back there kind of a shelf here and then another little and this is the tire inflation kit that they have here cup holder some space in at the back here uh, i'll go over to the driver's seat so you can see but you can see where i'm saying that if there's if it was a if i was in the middle here i'm kind of bent up against it and my legs are there's a transmission tunnel there as well so probably only a two-seater for the size of a van but next size up the e-expert would be the one to go for if you're looking for that three person adjusted height adjustable driver big door exact same as the other side except it has the double has the center locking for the rear and has the adjustable electric wing mirrors here we have a cup holder it's not the biggest in the world we've got our analog devices and we've got a little um, service reminder light that's on that some space in here some space in here this one has the optional reversing camera headlight adjuster over here some blanked off switches which as you all know i'm not a fan and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so on the left you have the wipers and underneath then they have audio right you have lights and indicators and underneath that you have cruise control the steering wheel itself is reach and rake up and down in and out this is the most basic screen they do black and white touch and it has radio media telephone drive and settings but there is no android auto or apple carplay you've got your volume knob you've got your power you've got your usb type a specifically just for charging your phone or for bluetooth or sorry for usb music on your phone hazards central locking uh, analog um, air conditioning speed on the left right is temperature you've got ac in this upper level trim recirculation all the different buttons there this is the little uh, multi uh, mode that you get in the combustion engine but we don't get it in the electric version drive modes you can see it up on the screen there you can have power normal or eco and that will detect the torque you have your drive mode selector park neutral and that's done via the selector um, but then you can also put it into B mode, which is the second stage regenerative braking. And then you've got your electronic handbrake and a little coin holder. Some storage in underneath here. You've got your 12 volt, the weird one that's down at the bottom in the majority of these, unless they've got that central cabin. Up on top, you've got some more practicality with that overhead storage. Central head unit is lights and pretty much it, reading. And, uh, and then you have your mirror with lights no lights and mirror on the passenger side yeah we've seen them before it's good to get them all covered on the channel i did a 60 second review of this a couple of months ago i thought people might be interested in a really nice and concise version uh, review but that wasn't the case people want a bit more details so you can see the reversing camera there and um, those lines don't move it's more of a guide and then on the drivers we have the analog speed what we're using with regards to aircon uh, the battery temp uh, level uh, but you get your range down here as well and then your charge eco power that is the peugeot e-partner let's take it out for a drive does it like driving the peugeot or peugeot e-partner traditional key that you get and so there is a key that you have to stick it in there isn't keyless entry and uh, keyless cert and let it engage push it all the way forward and then down for drive and then two stage regeneration or second stage regeneration electronic handbrake i like to take it off even though it'll come off automatically it's a lovely smooth platform nicely mapped acceleration this one does benefit from that reversing camera which i really like because this is the smaller of the Peugeots you can put down the um central seat back for a armrest if you want it there's a nice height to this door rest to armrest as well 
all of these cars and vans that have based on this platform have this weird little design lip on the outside so that the mirror the window will come all the way down but even like funny i always like to comment on it though the turn circle is good visibility is good nice big windscreen that quarter panel just behind the a pillar uh wing mirrors i always say would like to be a bit bigger and they don't have blind spot on this model that I'm driving today. This has the car steering wheel without the buttons on it. And so it's a nice little hexagonal steering wheel. Some people think it's a bit small. Perfect for me. And you have clear visibility of that driver binnacle in an analog form. But those nice luminescent blue, it's all good. E-Partner is really nice to drive. Um, I love the seating position, I love the visibility, and that how Peugeot and Stellantis group as a whole have set up that accelerator, brakes are decent as well, so the whole thing, the whole package, it's a really, really good commercial van offering. If this size of vehicle is all you need, and the range wise, if you're happy enough with around the 200 kilometer range. So this comes with a 50 kilowatt hour battery and 45 kilowatt hour of that is usable. Um, so it's not the biggest range of the world. And Stellantis vans, the small, medium and large one, do suffer from once you start going in a bit of a high speed, the range does start to fall off a cliff. Uh, and it's starting to be noted by a lot of brands, a lot of companies. So definitely, if you're thinking of getting one for your business, take it on a test drive, put equivalent weight in the back of it that you would carry around with you on a regular basis and just see what the actual range for you is. That will fluctuate between summer and winter. So today um, we're at about a three quarters full and about 180 kilometer range. Very hard to judge it because that battery level is an analog stick. We don't know what percentage exactly that battery is to reverse engineer back but overall it's it's a really nice package you can see why they sell so many of them when they can get them it's a 100 kilowatt motor with 136 brake horsepower and 260 newton meters torque and it's the same across all of the Stellantis brands the only difference is aesthetics really and some of the fit and finishes but otherwise it's you're pretty much below it's whether it's the commercial vehicle whether it's the passenger version of this which is the e-rifter which is also on my channel but if you're interested in these electric van offerings i have a full playlist on the channel i'll put it over my left shoulder now um just so you can see the difference in it but whether it's the toyota pro a city whether it's the um combo e Vauxhall or uh, opal whether it's the citroen whether it's the fiat e doblo they're all on the same platform. It is just aesthetics and brand loyalty or availability of vehicles, potentially that's gonna make the decision for you. But if this is falling within your price and your budget, and you're looking at that total cost of ownership, whether you're, you're leasing it or purchasing it outright, the running costs, the warranty on the Peugeot e-Partner is eight years or 160,000 kilometers, whichever comes sooner. And what they will guarantee is that the battery will have a, a minimum of a 70% uh, state of charge health um, once it gets to that level. But I think it's, they're, they're really rock solid from what I can see. They're out and about long enough now. Suspension on the Peugeot e partner on the front, you've got independent McPherson stripe struts with anti roll bar, and in the rear, it's an independent trailing arm wishbone suspension. There are a couple of things that I'd like to see uh, on this. I'd prefer to see the color multimedia display, but that's an optional extra. I'd love to see the eye cockpit as well. It's great to have that reversing camera. There is an upgrade on that reversing camera, which is a kind of like a smart sense blind spot warning, which I think is what's going to supersede the actual little light up lights on the rear view mirrors for this type of vehicle. Hopefully you've enjoyed my review of the Peugeot e-Partner. Make sure you leave a comment and let me know whether you drive it already, what you think of it. I always love to hear from actual owners of vehicles. Share the video if somebody's interested in getting a commercial version of if they're transitioning their fleet over. And remember, if you think an EV is for you, leave it to me and I'll review. Thank you very much for watching.